Assalamu alaikum to Allah barakatuh. I mean here from Sira Masters of course of designing, building, developing the Muslim mindset for success. And uh, in this special video on Ramadan, as you know, I'm doing a campaign around the book that I'm putting together inshallah. The book of course is around what the, the Islamic model for masculinity, meaning how should a good Muslim man be? Those three things. When you bring them together, what are the traits of that person? What are the traits that Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu advise us to have? Yeah, it's a big question, it's an important question. I feel like answering this question will help build families, make families stronger, which is essential for having a strong ummah. A strong united ummah is built upon the bricks of strong families, okay? So a man needs to develop himself, right? He needs to build up himself, and he needs to know what his role is and what the good traits are of a man, right? And I actually think that the, the byproduct of that is that his wife will be happier with him or that he'll be able to uh, have a better marriage. If, let's say he's not married yet, he'll be able to pick a better wife that suits him better and she'll actually respect him more, okay? So I wanted to give you a taster, a flavor of, of the kind of stuff that's in the book, the kind of stuff that I found so far coming from the Quran, coming from the Sunnah, guidance of what it means to be a real man, okay? So, story here of Anas bin Nadr, okay? Anas bin Nadr was a companion of the Prophet and it just happened he missed the Battle of Badr. Now, you know the Battle of Badr, the first battle uh, of the Muslims, and it was a big deal, right? The, until today, the people who fought in Badr, they have a higher status than anyone else. Very, very high status. The people specifically have fought in Badr, right? The people that fought in other battles, they, they have a high status as well. But Badr, it's like another, uh, it's like no other, right? So, Anas bin Nadr, he missed it. He missed. And by the way, he's the uncle of uh, Anas bin Malik, right? Um, so he missed the battle. He went to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he, he made a bold claim, okay? He, he basically, he gave it all that, right? He talked a lot. He said a big statement. He said that I missed that battle. But when another chance comes, when another battle comes, then Allah will show you what I do. Allah will show you what I put forward, what I bring to the table, what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically replace that, that loss of not being at better. I'm going to replace it with, you'll see what I do, basically. Now, this is a big claim to make, uh, in, especially in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, Allah will show you what. So he's very certain in what he's, what he's saying here. Now, when the Battle of Uhud came about, he was there, right? He was ready to go. He was uh, saying, I'm here, I'm going, okay? And I believe it was just when things were going south a little bit in the Battle of Uhud, and some of the companions were retreating slightly. He was running forward. He ran past them, okay? So they're retreating away from the enemy. He's going towards the enemy, okay? And he ran, and uh, one of the companions, they stopped him. They said, uh, where are you going, Anas? Where, you know, we're, we, we're, we're kind of retreating. Where are you going? He said, Jannah, Jannah. He said, I can smell Jannah from near Mount Uhud. And he ran towards the enemy. Now, after the Battle of Uhud, they found his body, but they couldn't really identify who it was, this body. Why? Because he had over 80 wounds on his body from arrows, from spears, from swords. This is how hard he went in. He went in with all his might. He went in with all his might. And he was a martyr, fi sabilillah. The only way that they could identify that it was him, this body, is that his, his sister saw his finger. And she said, oh yeah, that's his finger. I noticed maybe he had a unique feature on his finger. He said, yeah, that's him. Now, Enes bin Malik, the nephew of, of uh, Enes bin Nadr, he said, about about him uh, that we saw this happen and we said this must be the ayah that was revealed about people like him what's the ayah okay this ayah it basically means in a in a brief translation من المؤمنين رجال. From the believers, there are real men. In a Sa'di in his tafsir, he said that uh, saying رجال here, men, من المؤمنين رجال. What Allah is saying is from the believers, there are real men. Yeah. من المؤمنين رجال. صدقوا ما عهد الله عليه. They were truthful. 
they stood by their agreement. They were truth to, truthful to the agreement they made with Allah and these messengers. What's the agreement? It's the agreement that when they came into Islam, when they gave bayat to the Prophet that they will protect him and they will stand by their promise to Allah that they worship only Allah and that they'll protect the Prophet فَمِنْهُمْ قَضَى نَحْبَ And so from, from those people, some of them are those that have already met their fate, meaning they already uh, died fi sabillah. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْفَضِرْ And the others, they're waiting for their chance. Okay? So there's, there's these two categories. Either you've been martyred or you're waiting for your chance. Right? You're waiting for your chance to prove that you're really about this. You're really truthful. You're serious about this agreement. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْفَضِرْ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا And they didn't change at all. They didn't change. They're stable. They promised this. They said, I'm on this. I agree to this. And they did it. Right? And also you can take from this that they are not people who are zigzagging and changing as the wind blows. They just change. No, they're stable personalities and they are steadfast upon what they believe and what they uh, say they will do. And Enes bin Malik, he said, we used to think this ayah was revealed because of this, uh, upon people like Enes bin Nadr and people like that. And so this is one of the traits of a real man. Min al-mu'minina rijal. From the believers are real men. And the real men are men who they are steadfast and they stick to their word. They say they'll do something, they do it. They better back up the talk, in other words. right? So this is a little taster of one of the stories, one of the, uh, you know, the explanations of uh, an ayah from the Qur'an uh, that we take uh, as men. We take that to take inspiration and know, okay, this is a real trait of a man. And interesting, of course, in many cultures, we have this concept of sticking by your word, being a man of your word. How many times have you heard that? Be a man of your word. And many of the traits that we find coming from the Quran and the Sunnah, we find that it's encouraged in other cultures. But of course, this is not just a culture, Islam. This is not just a culture. This is coming from the Lord of the world. So to know that, that Allah is the one telling us that this is a trait of a man, that gives us, of course, uh, much more confidence that this is really, truly how we should be. And this is the best way to be. And this being like this will not damage society or ourselves or anything. It will actually be a benefit, right? Because some things that cultures come up with, there is good in them and there is bad. But this, this comes from Allah. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. This is just a little taster, of course. I am uh, raising money slash taking pre-orders for the book right now. If you look in the description below, you'll see the link there. Uh, please give anything. I mean, either you want your, your copy, inshallah, as soon as it comes out, or you just want to contribute because, of course, there are costs to doing this. There are costs like designing the, the cover. It really, really needs a really good cover uh, if it's going to be a book that's taken seriously and that people want to, to have and put on their bookshelf, right? So there is the cover, there is editing, there is printing copies, right? So if I get, you know, 100 pre-orders, it doesn't mean I'm just going to print 100 pre-orders, right? I've got to print more than that, so I'm ready to deliver for anyone else that wants in the future. And then, of course, there is promotional slash, you know, marketing uh, costs, which, alhamdulillah, I'm quite good at. Like, I know how to do those things, but they do cost money, right? So anything you can give will be really, really appreciated. Already, we smashed through the first day uh, goal, and I'm just looking to see how far we can take it, because, of course, people might want the book, and people really might believe in this cause, and uh, you can learn all about it in the link in the description below, inshallah. Thank you for joining me. May Allah accept your um, worship in Ramadan. And if you contribute, may Allah accept that from you and really make it very heavy on your scales. And I put barakah in this project and allow the project to have the impact that I'm hoping to have with it. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. See you in the next one, inshallah.